For today's Temporal Forces tabletop testing, we're going to be pitting the Ancient Toolbox up against the Iron Hands Future Box deck. The deck in front of you is the senior winning list from the Champions League in Fukuoka. The deck revolves around the Vengeful Feathers attack from the new Roaring Moon. 70 base damage plus 10 more for each Ancient card in the discard pile. That's why you can see 29 of the cards in the deck all have that Ancient trait in the top right corner. The backup attackers of Coridon and Slitherwing, which is going to be important in this matchup because it is a fighting type to help out against Iron Hands. Fluttermane's in here, which can just be a slowing down effect against some other matchups. Not going to be that helpful in this one. And Shay is going to be playing the Quad Iron Hands Future Box deck. It is incorporating the new Iron Crowns EX with that Cobalt Command ability, which is going to buff our Iron Hands EX's damage output. These are stackable abilities as well. So with the combination of these, as well as Future Boost Energy Capsule, the the Ampy very much can become very dangerous and even get over some ancient boosted basics that are on my side of the field. She also does have the single prize Miraidon in the deck. That speed peak can be a great way to power up some Iron Hands and throws a single prize Pokemon into the active position to make life awkward for me as well. As you can see, Energy Acceleration is the name of the game with this deck. There are those four electric generators, a very healthy count of 13 basic lightning. There's the new Heavy Baton, which can be put onto your Iron Hands so that when they are KO'd, you can move these energies onto a bench Iron Hands to continue that chain of attacks with Ampy very much. There's also the Reboot Pod A spec card, which can get additional energy in play onto your future Pokemon as well. So it's a nice fallback so that you don't have to get quite so lucky with your generators, which is always a nice thing to see as well. I hope you enjoyed today's battle video and stay tuned to the end to hear about some other considerations after some more playtesting. If you're looking for PTCG live codes, make sure you check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OmniPoke. So we are getting things underway with our first game. Shay is on the right playing the future box and I'm on the left playing the ancient box. Shea has led out with an Iron Hands EX and has a Techno Radar. He's going to pitch a Counter Catcher, does play the full four copies of that so shouldn't find that too tricky and can grab two future Pokemon immediately which is a really great start. Going to see a couple of the Iron Crown EX. These are really important cards to get into the mix to improve the damage output of your Iron Hands. Obviously Ampy very much is 120 base, so pushing that into the likes of our Coridon and Roaring Moon is going to be pretty important, so it makes a lot of sense there. As I am going to kick things off my turn with a Earthen Vessel to pitch an energy and also Nest Wall out Radiant Greninja. Greninja is a massive card for the deck, honestly. Seems like a really big deal to bank more energy in the discard pile, give yourself some early cycle, uh, whilst also sort of activating Sada as well. So cool to see that in the mix early. I have another Nest Ball, which is great, and I immediately identify Slitherwing as a big card for the matchup. Obviously, the Burning Turbulence with 120 base damage, doubling up to 240 thanks to the Fighting Weakness, means I could look towards an early KO. I do have a two Fighting Energy attack cost with the Slitherwing, so I'd have to find one of my two Switch Carts if I was able to launch an attack here. But even just setting things up now, the Pokestop seems to have whiffed there. Uh, for next turn could be okay, so I at least have response play here. I can also get my turn attachments onto Coridon, and I have two other ancient Pokemon that I can bench. So we are going to be launching a 120 damage attack here with the Primeval Battering, which is pretty solid. Shay is going to get the attachments onto Iron Hands, and then it's just going to research a bunch away. And it's going to look to get this out of the active and get something else swinging here, ideally. The deck only plays future boost energy capsules, so you'd have to try and reload another Iron Hands, or maybe just like tank for a turn or something, if he's going to launch any attack whatsoever here. Uh, actually, we see the uh, A spec here, the reboot, it's going to get the extra energy onto the active, and it comes with a baton, so it does seem to make some sense here to just cash in on the arm press. I'm quite happy to see that Shay's forced to take a single prize knockout here, but at least Shay's been able to develop the heavy baton, so he's allowing himself to power up the benched hands as well next turn, so that's going to be pretty okay for him. Because there's a damaged Iron Hands EX, I def definitely don't want to go in with the Slitherwing, even though that's the one Pokemon with energy. So my debate right now is, 
Um, I think I don't have enough Pokemon in hand to battering through the active, so that's my hesitancy going for Coridon. But I also have a two energy attack cost, which is only dark energy for the Roaring Moon, and my only energy in hand is fighting energy. So my debate is uh, which is the better one to go in here, because I have to like Sada and Greninja dig towards either of those pieces. My top deck was immediately another Roaring Moon, so I've missed out on the chance of the guaranteed Coridon. Uh, so we are going to start it this way, which means I can draw into Darkness Energy or um, still have the option with Switch Cart to get the Coridon hit in. We do find the other Darkness Energy though, so we're okay to attack with Roaring Moon. I'm going to get a quick Pokestop in there. Shay, not happy with my Pokestops because he was playing the deck earlier and didn't have quite as favorable Pokestops. Uh, as you can see, my uh, ancient Pokemon and general card count is going up, and I am able to two-shot this Iron Hands. Shay just making sure that with the modifiers of Future Booster plus the two Crown, he might be able to reach onto my Roaring Moon with the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule attached. I am at 200 hit points, uh, and he can get there. He just needs to have access to the extra Iron Crown uh, to be able to amp you very much for two prizes through this. I'm going to see the bounce of the Pokestop into Town Store. I'm going to see another big research. This deck does cycle a lot of cards via its supporters, as well as Gift Energy chipping in every now and then. We're going to see... Uh, he's just going to switch up his turn attachment into a Gift Energy. That makes a lot more sense. Even though I'm not really known for hand disruption, it's always a better thing just to get extra card advantage here. We're going to see another Iron Hands come out after a Techno Radar as well as the Future Booster coming out from the Town Store. So that guy's ready to go as well. And I think Shay is just, yep, going to go for the big Ampy very much. He goes down to three prize cards remaining. I think with Slitherwing lined up, I have a pretty obvious KO here. I get to take all the energy off the board and go down to two prize cards. That's looking like a pretty decent uh, opportunity for me here to capitalize. Gonna see the Ancient Booster capsule for free from Town Store that Shay's given us. And we already have the Fighting Energy in hand, so that's no issue. It's really about me playing around Iono at this stage, because the Iron Hands deck does have Hand Disruption. So I might want to try and just thin things out here. I am going to Nest Ball out another Roaring Moon. It looks like I have an Ultra Ball as well, which can thin some things. I'm going to get rid of a Flutter and an Ancient Boost Energy Capsule. Uh, maybe a bit questionable there to get rid of the Ancient Booster, because I am going to be uh, heavily damaging myself with this Slitherwing. Um... But possibly I could make it more difficult for Shay to get a Maridon KO here. Uh, as I do want to continually take two prize knockouts. But either way, I'm going to get a Sada in. And I'm going to get Darkness Energy on a couple moon. And we can swing the fighting onto the active here. So we are going to get the KO on this Iron Hands as expected. Have a decent chunk. I have 12 Ancient cards in my discard pile right now. And... Iron Crown EX does have Darkness Weakness as well, so that's pretty good. I'm going to leave myself with 40 hit points remaining. Shay's going to get some Gift Energy cards here, which actually looks pretty good, because I think I saw some Generators there. That's going to be pretty important if he wants to get the KO. He's going to go in with the Iron Crown EX, picks up the Maridon, which I think is really important for him here, actually, because my Reliance is quite heavy on Counter Catchers. I play one Boss's Orders and two Counter Catchers, so if he can weave in a Maridon attack here, take a single prize, puts him down to two just for a ampy very much for game, and it means that he's not walking into a counter catcher play, so I think that's definitely the best line he can go for here. Yeah, I think he's just realizing that based on how many future boosters he has left, that it was actually best to promote the Iron Hands to start the turn. Obviously, we're in a testing session, um, so we're freely talking things out to one another. We're playing these decks for the first time in some occasions, so I think, it, um, I think it's fine to make up these changes because it ends up Shay has a really good turn now. I'm going to basically see how the game would have played out had we have just been on the right lines from the start, which is fine. So yeah, the Miraidon is going to take that single prize, putting Shay just down to those two. So he is in range of an Ampy very much for game. And uh, yeah, I have to try and dig out my boss's orders. I've gone through a decent amount of cards in the deck. You can see just by eyeballing it, it looks like I'm definitely below 20 or so cards, I would say. And I think I have Greninja and a couple uh, Poker Gears to try and get towards this. I'm going to Vessel quickly away a Counter Catcher, because that's obviously not live for me right now. I can thin a Darkness Energy, and it really is down to whether or not I can move this Maridon out the active, essentially. I'm going to see the Greninja for two. 
yeah, counter catch is still not helpful. We have gear, which gets us an explorer's guidance. That's not what we're after. Shay's starting to rub his hands as he sees me miss from gear. <laughs> and then we have, uh, yeah, another poker gear coming in. Big seven cards, and it's another miss. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that is pretty rough. The boss's orders was in the deck, but it is just one copy, which is a real shame. So, now it looks like I'm in a really bad spot. I've had my double miss. I have no hand disruption, so I can't make life much more difficult for Shay. Just showing my hand there of having basically every supporter under the sun, but the one that I want. And then, of course, from the Explorer's Guidance, I obviously see the boss's orders. So, little unfortunate there. We are loading up our discard pile with ancient cards at this stage. Even missed drawing into uh, the Ace Bet, the drum, which is now in hand, but obviously I would have loved to have used the drum before... Uh, playing my support card, of course. So yeah, just tidying up my discard pile a little bit there. We do have a decent number of energy in there. We have a decent number of ancient cards as well for certain. I choose to pass because there's a two retreat cost on the Maridon, So I'm trying to make it more difficult for Shay to get an attack in with the Iron Hands on the bench. That's obviously the main hurdle right now. If he can launch an attack here, he will be able to amp very much for the last two prize cards. And we can see with the Arvin, he's picked up uh, the generator and does hit double lightning energy. So I think from prize cards he was able to take a future booster, so should have the game now just by retreating, and there you go. So yeah, nice uh, win for Shea there. It was a bit of a whiff from me in that game one, um, but in fairness, Shea had to take his first prize just by doing an arm press, and that's not super common for the deck, honestly. The deck's pretty good at taking two prize card knockouts, so... Um, yeah, a bit of a back and forth there. I had the opportunity to win, just whiffed on the double poker gear, which is one of the downsides of this deck list. Actually, both deck lists are quite tied towards counter catcher. So let's see how things go in the second game. So here we are again, getting the second game underway. Uh, I'm going to be drawing for the turn, and I have a flutter main start, and we are going to nest ball here. Looks like my hand wasn't all that great, so I think it might be a bit of a panic Radiant Greninja play here, which is not something you want to see. The deck, obviously having so many ancient cards, doesn't play that many, like, draw or engine style Pokemon. Just the Radiant Greninja, really. Uh, I'm going to get some fighting energy out of the deck pretty early, because I do want to identify Erdi Slitherwing as an attacking threat, as well as Coridon to an extent as well. I've already got a Darkness Energy pitched, so it's always good to get a mixture in the discard pile to have all of your attackers available to you, which is pretty nice. And we will get the first Greninja in for a couple cards. Don't think I get much help there. I think I just see supporters for later. There is the Pokestop. Does get rid of a couple ancient cards and will allow me to get the Earthen Vessel, which isn't bad either, to be honest with you. I'm going to swing an energy onto the Flutterman. It does actually have an attack. It's not a great one, but it is an option. And even just swinging an energy on can pay for the retreat cost later. So it's something. I much would have preferred to have attached to a Roaring Moon, a Coridon, or Slitherwing, but... Here we are, Shay has a Pokestop of his own and gets a big hit here with the Techno Radar and the Nest Ball pickup, which I think really changes how his opening turn is going to play out. Gets rid of a couple Iono, which is looking pretty good for him as well, because my hand wasn't great as we saw. When you see Fluttermain attach pass, essentially, you do not want to Iono your opponent too much. And Shay will be able to get a number of Ancient Pokemon out as quickly as possible. Fluttermain has a base 90 hit points. We're getting plus 60 from the Ancient Booster, but she actually can reach 160 pretty easily with the help of Crown and Hands. He could even take a two prize KO with it, which would be terrifying. Uh, yeah, we're going to see the Iron Hands and the second Iron Crown EX as well as Miraidon coming down. And then we see the Town Store for a Future Boost Energy Capsule. It's kind of so versatile in the deck list. It's damage modification as well as pivoting. That's why you see four copies in the deck list. Shay now looking at Arvin as the supporter choice. Has thinned a number of Pokemon out of the deck, so he's thinking that they have better odds with an Arvin now to get the job done with Generator. You see a second Future Boost Energy Capsule, and it's really down to how these Generators hit, to be honest with you. He does have the Gift Energy in hand, so if everything goes wrong, he can still swing with Maridon. But straight away, the first Generator gets two Lightning Energy, and suddenly things are looking a lot scarier. And uh, we see a second generator coming down. There's a third Shay immediately swinging the board. Gets the two for two. Too many energy hitting the board in one turn. And that really does change things. Because Shay has double iron crown. Plus got two future boosters from the town store plus the Arvon. 
So we'll be swinging for 160 damage with the amp you very much. And really, really puts a lot of pressure on me here. I literally have to get Slitherwing or I lose. Uh, we're going to see a quick town store to get a tool out of the deck here. And I think Greninja has to hit me Sarda here to have any chance of doing anything. Because I don't think I have Sarda in the hand. I think my supporter is the uh, Explorer's Guidance. So Greninja has to hit Sarda for me to do anything here. And it has to ideally come alongside a ball search for Slitherwing. Uh, otherwise, we're in a ton of trouble here. We are in a ton of, ton of trouble. Greninja does hit two. There's Slitherwing and Sarda. Okay, so something's coming together. Now I just need to find a switching out to move into the Slitherwing. I don't think I have it. There's an Ancient Booster Capsule coming onto the Slitherwing. The fighting energy, but no switch out, so I am forced to pass here, which means Shea's going to take a four prize lead here. That is... that is scary. That really is scary. Uh, the only good news is that I know Shea won't be able to take a KO on the bench. Were he playing Iron Bundle? It could be something he could go for. I've seen that come into a number of deck lists in City Leagues in Japan, so definitely a card to sort of keep an eye out for, because it could be a way of forcing my Slithering into the active. That would really leave me with no hope, essentially, but even just going up these four prize cards is obviously crazy, so <laughs> I don't have to worry too much for Shea, to be honest with you. They're just debating how this Arvin is going to go. Looks like it's going to be a Techno Radar just to get another Iron Hands into the mix, as well as another Future Boost Energy Capsule. Uh, and then the Techno Radar is going to be pitching a Miraidon. Um, there's already one in play, and you almost always only use one Miraidon just to skew that prize race more than anything. Shay's debating whether or not it's worth getting Crown down, and eventually does go for it, as well as the backup hands. See a Gift Energy coming onto the Miraidon, just as a backup play. We do see a Future Booster Capsule to the benched Iron Hands. It does come over to me. The only good news is that the other Iron Hands has no energy on it right now. So I could take this two prize knockout, hope that Miraidon has to swing next turn. And then I hope that I can counter catch the Iron Hands EX and take two prize cards on it with a Roaring Moon. That's going to be tough though. I really think that is going to be tough. The issue really here is, even though I can get this response KO, I don't really have enough Ancient cards in my discard pile to... After this Slitherwing goes down to the Maridon, I won't have enough Ancient cards in my discard to countercatch the Iron Hands on the bench to finish it off. So I think I'm just too far away here. And uh, yeah, we are going to end up conceding this one, I think. Let me know what you think of the games, of the matchup as well. How strong do you think both of these archetypes are going to be? And let's get into some other considerations. So for some other considerations for the Ancient Toolbox, there are a few different variations going around with a deck. Obviously, you're naturally going to be playing between 28 and around 32 of the very high-end Ancient Tag cards. So you can't really play around with too much within the deck list. I do think the Defiance Band is a bit of an outlier in the list where we do have that Pokestop, so sometimes it simply just gets discarded and doesn't get any value for you. I think the Cabalion, although being a much more specific tech card to try and help out against Charizard, of course, I think in part that's the reason why Defiance Band is in the deck list anyway, to reach that very high damage output towards the late game for Charizard specifically. And the upside of Cabalion, of course, is that we can thin it from the deck, search it for when we need it. But also, if it is discarded with Pokestop or with Explorer's Guidance, you do have the super odd option to get it back into the mix, unlike this Defiance Band, which essentially just goes into the ether and is no longer helpful to us. Superior Energy Retrieval and Trekking Shoes were both in the Masters Top 16 list. And are other ways of getting some more cards into your discard pile with that Ancient Tag. The Superior Energy Retrieval also being great for allowing you to reload your Radiant Greninja to get as many uses out of that card as possible to help you cycle through the deck. Arsenal versus Pokestop is also an interesting debate. Obviously, Pokestop gives us extra access to possibly like ball search cards in the opening stages and is a way of getting more ancient cards into our discard pile, but it does force us to certainly play Super Odd and Palpad, whereas Artisan never is going to go haywire and make life difficult for you with some awkward discards, but is obviously quite limited in that it can't get you Radiant 
Conqueror Ninja, which is such an important basic in the opening stages to unlock your Sardas as one of your key supporters to allow for early aggression. I feel like the Pokestop is still the best option, but I do want to try out Artisan as well, because by adding in Pokestops, you also have to make other tweaks and adjustments with your deck list, whereas Artisan is kind of that lower maintenance stadium card to have within the list. Jet Energy is quite an interesting one. It only really works on your core ride on to get decent attacking pressure in, but these can be options within the deck list to help out against the Snorlax and Great Tusk matchups. These decks that are going to try and trap you here and there, and Jet Energy can obviously maintain your pressure with Coridon throughout the entire game without the fear of it getting misfortuned or airied out of your hand so that you can make sure you guarantee your switching cards throughout the game, which is fantastic. And at the same time, you can remove these Jet Energies via Radiant Greninja throughout the entire game. So you're overall buffing your energy count to make sure that you're getting more cards with Greninja throughout the entire game as well. And then in the top right corner, I did just want to mention that there are also some hybrid builds in Japan of the sort of ancient box where you can just go much more down the EX plus Baby Moon approach where you have Dark Patch, you have uh, the Four Sada and the Four Explorer and you try and get Frenzied Gougings and Calamity Storms in the mix whilst also having the single prize attacking option when required. In a build like that, it's much more likely that your single prize Roaring Moon can only really take on other single prize Pokemon and sometimes reach onto other basic EXs for sometimes two for ones, whereas the Frenzy Gouging is going to be that option to have that late game bomb, unlike in a build like this, which works towards that in the late game just by sheer number of ancient cards in the bin. For some other considerations of the future style toolbox, definitely the Gusting is a big debate. Seeing four counter catcher is really interesting and makes you map quite specifically in many matchups to make sure that you have your means of using Ampy very much to take those last few prize cards. I do think it has great synergy within the deck list and the Quad Arvin definitely seems like a key component of this 60. I think that Prime Catcher may end up being stronger than the Reboot Pod overall because it does allow you to be a bit possibly greedier and take out crucial threats in certain matchups or if you have had to go down certain specific prize maps. Prime Catcher certainly bails you out and allows you to be a little bit more flexible with your game plans throughout the entire game. Obviously, the Reboot Pod is still powerful and does give you some leeway to whiff your generators, which I do think is strong, but I do want to test out the Prime Catcher in here as well. There's a number of lists from City Leagues and have changed that Reboot into the Prime Catcher. Iron Bundle, kind of a soft gust option as well, where you already have the Techno Radars in the deck list, so you have really good searchability for this card and you can try and push something out of the way. Your bench is never really that clogged up. You are trying to get your crowns onto the board quite quickly and normally you have that double Iron Hands developed, but there often are situations where you can just Hyper Blower as and when you need to, which is cool. And if we are going to work in things like Pokegate into the deck list, one copy of Boss's Orders is also like pretty fine. You do play a lot of researches, so it doesn't always come off, but every now and then this could be part of your late game plans. Speaking of which, Pokegear has been popping up more and more over the Morty's Conviction, which made it that kind of one-off kooky card within the list that did well in the Champions League 60. But I do think Gear is kind of that more versatile option where, of course, Research and Iona are stronger cards within the deck. Even without Boss's Orders, I think the Pokegear is justified as like a one or two count just to make sure you're cycling through the deck quite efficiently. Whilst Vacuum has also popped up, it can obviously get rid of some health buffing tools, which can be handy for you and can be a searchable stadium bump, which is important for the League HQs, which can show up in a number of Arceus decks. At the moment, the list is all future-based Pokemon, but I do think there's possibly some argument to add in some other V Lightning type Pokemon. Raikou is very efficient with his attack cost, so it could just simply get into the mix. If you are trying to weave in one or two prize KOs, Raikou is pretty decent at that with that Lightning Rondo option. And because we already are playing Town Stores and Quad Arvin, the Forest Seal Stone could be an extra consistency buff and you also gain Fleet Footed, which is a tiny engine Pokemon and the deck really doesn't have much engine outside of just draw supporters and having Gift Energy procs throughout the game. It's something I've not experimented with too much, but it is something that's on my list of things to do. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Cheers.